small, strong and weak Ugly and shifty, beautiful and sleek They hop, they jump, they slither and slide Come out in the open and they run and hide It takes all kinds to live in Buck City Some are weird and some are pretty Come on down, let's meet in Buck City Don't let them bug you There's nothing to be afraid of Bugs can be fun. We're all friends here. So come on down. Let's meet in Bug City. With Christina Ritchie. Dr. Art. It don't forget me. But she's sick. Today's creature, though it is rarely dangerous, is one of the most feared animals on Earth. Hmm. The members of this group are called arachnids, most of which predators that hunt or trap and eat other animals. Hmm. They are found in every climate and habitat. The largest of them measures 10 inches from toe to toe, can live for 20 years, hmm. and is powerful enough, if it could catch one, to kill a bird. That's it, I'm out of here. A teeny small bird, Bugsy Seagull. Not a big bird like you. Oh. Now study the letters floating around on the screen. Just relax and focus on them, and see if you can tell what today's critter is. <laughs> is there a doctor in the house? Help, Dr. Art! What is it, Christina? Ah, uh, good old Braveheart. What can we do? You know, my doctorate is in insects. I really don't know bird first aid. Bugsy! Bugsy! Sardines, Bugsy! Nice, juicy sand crabs! Hot dogs? Hot dogs? Where? Uh, pass me one. Uh, no mustard, please. Uh, the sour crab. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let sleeping gulls lie. We've got a fascinating animal to explore. Time is wasting. And I'm sure the kids aren't the least bit bothered by our guest here. Of course not. Probably because they've got a screen between it and them. Spiders, though their apparent creepiness seems to set them apart, are only one member of a class of animals called the arachnida. Other arachnids are ticks, mites, and scorpions. Still, it seems to be the most familiar arachnid, the spider, that has the worst reputation, one that it doesn't necessarily deserve. The fact is that the vast majority of spiders are completely harmless to humans. Isn't that right? Yes. There are about 30,000 species, and all but a very few are harmless to us. This is a Mexican red knee tarantula. But she's been milked of her poison, right? No. Hey, even if it did bite me, it would be painful, but the poison's not much worse than a bee sting. Anyway, this old girl is a pet. She has nothing against people. What have you got there? A surprising fact. All of the critters in this tray, beetle, bee, grasshopper, butterfly, and spider, the only one that is not an insect is the spider. A spider isn't an insect? No, here, look. Do you remember the basic rules of being an insect? Yes. They all have three body parts. They all have six legs and um, a pair of antennae. But the spider has two body parts. And you see here, instead of six legs, the spider has eight legs. Finally, they do not have antennae. But they do have fangs. Well, yes, but they only bite for two reasons. One, if they think you're something to eat, and two, if they're trying to defend themselves. Are you sure she doesn't consider me food? I'm sure. Why would something this size consider something our size for food? Generally, mm. they avoid people. Wow. Think about it. You can see their webs mm. everywhere, but you hardly see them at all. Actually, you can see their webs everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I mean everywhere. What are you doing? Ooh. Look, Bugsy. Oh, you mean we've been in a spider web the whole time? And I'm still alive? And what kind of children's show is this, anyway? We're in a dark, scary studio with giant spiders. I quit. 
feel better now? Hmm. I'm glad you brought up webs. They are literally one of the greatest wonders in nature. Nothing man-made can equal the properties of the silk spun by spiders. A strand of spider silk is stronger than a strand of stainless steel of the same width. And it's twice as stretchy as nylon. Stretchy steel? <laughs> Ten to one says he's making it up. Shh. Bugsy, how rude. Hmm. Every web starts with a framework. Then the spokes and circles are built out from the center. No two spider species spin the same webs. In fact, no one spider will spin exactly the same web twice. But every spider spins a web. No, every spider spins silk, and all for different reasons and uses. Silk is produced by glands in the spider's abdomen, and then fed out by special spigot-like appendages called spinnerets. Some spiders lay maze-like mats of silk on the ground to catch crawling insects who simply stumble into the trap. However, since most of the insect spiders love to eat are flyers, many spiders have developed mid-air traps, the ones we refer to as webs. In order to effectively catch insects in flight, the webs are not only built like elaborate fishing nets, they are also lined with sticky beads to firmly trap the quick insects that try to pass through them. A fly has been caught in the web of the Nephila spider, a particularly powerful spider with a web up to six feet across. As soon as the Nephila feels the frantic vibrations of an insect caught in her lines, she quickly finds and paralyzes it with venom from her fangs. Then, in still another use of spider silk, she speedily wraps the victim in a cocoon and sets it aside, giving herself the option of eating it whenever she pleases. But the Nephila has company on her web, a little spider called Argerodes doesn't bother to spin her own web to obtain food. She gets it by stealing from another's. Argerodes knows that Nephila has very poor eyesight and waits for her to be distracted by the vibrations of a new victim. Then she makes her move. Cutting the lines that hold the fly in the Nephila's web, she attaches her own drag line, lowers the feast to safety, and methodically hauls it away. In the world of spiders, there is more than one way to snare a meal. Okay, Christina, it's time for a pencil alert. So get a pencil and paper and write down the things you'll need to gather if you want to make your own bug city. I have a project ready for you here, a way you can observe your own spiders at home. What I'm working with today is a cellar spider. Some people call it the daddy long legs. But before we start, I want to give you some cautions. Do not collect spiders without adult supervision, and that means every minute. Never touch a spider with your bare hands, because all of them can bite. Here, for example, is a spider you don't want to catch or be bitten by, the black widow. Now, when you're collecting your spiders with a pair of gloves and adult supervision, it's important to have your spider jar ready to go. Just take a gallon jar, have a lid with some holes drilled in it. Spiders need air. And be sure to have a branch that will fit inside the jar. The spider will need this to spin its web. Now, go out and find a spider. I bet if you look into your garage or somewhere in your yard, you'll find all kinds of spiders already in their webs. I've already captured a spider here, our cellar spider. Now, their bodies are very delicate, so you don't want to touch them with your hands or your gloved hands, but you can take a paintbrush and very gently coax the spider into your jar. And you want to take just a little bit of water 
and just spritz the bottom and put the lid on. And then you have your spider habitat. Now after a few days, your spider will have a chance to spin a web just like this one here. And you'll want to feed it every few days or so with small crickets or flies. It's very important to feed them animals that are no bigger than the spider itself. Now this cellar spider is a very slow, quiet spider and also very unlikely to bite. But still, when you go to capture one, remember, wear thick gloves and never try to collect spiders unless an adult is with you. Hmm. Uncover your eyes, Bugsy. Hey, are they gone? Yeah. Bugsy, we have to get you over this fear of spider. Hey, Christina, it's not a fear. It's worse. It's a phobia. You know, birds eat spiders by the gazillion. Yeah, well, not enough of them. Because they're still running around, aren't they? OK, how about this? You love anything having to do with space, right? Yeah. You know what? What? On the Skylab mission, two spiders named Arabella and Anita went up with the astronauts. Scientists wanted to see if they could spin webs without gravity. Hmm. So, spiders have been in space. Yeah, so what? Uh, they'll send anything into space. Hey, cheese mold has been sent into space. Funny. Seagulls have never been sent to space. Hmm. Wait, this one I'm waiting you up for. One of the greatest cartoon action heroes of all time was based on the many talents, the amazing skills of... What, can you think? Uh, uh, let me think. Uh, don't, don't tell me. Uh, I think I know. Uh, oh, yeah! The Roadrunner. Oh, Bugsy. Look. The popular cartoon character Spider-Man partly owes his success to imitating the moves and habits of the spider. Hey, I could do that. I give up. Let's take a look at some spider behavior. In most species of spiders, females are many times larger than their opposite sex. This can make the necessary act of mating downright death-defying for males. The female Nephila, as we have seen, is highly predatory and nearsighted. Though the male of her species is too small to be considered a good meal, he must still approach carefully. These legs are all that remain of the last male Nephila who tried to mate with this female. The male Nephila waits for the distraction of new prey before he dares to make his move. Once he reaches her, he convinces her to tolerate his fertilization by massaging her with his arm-like pedipalps. This male tarantula is in a similar tricky situation. Since all spiders are predatory, solitary, and fanged, it's almost a wonder that males ever manage to perpetuate their species. In this case, the male uses hooks on his front legs to subdue the female's poisonous fangs long enough for him to perform the task of fertilization. It's an amazing feat if you think about it. One little slip and he'll be a dinner instead of a dad. The female jumping spider, one of the best sighted of all animals, is a little more open to courtship, but only if she recognizes in time that there are attractive male markings being waved at her. Once the female signals back, the male is fairly safe to approach. And unless she changes her mind, the female will soon become a mother spider. There is great variety in the way females manage their eggs. This cellar spider mother has spun a silk sack to carry her eggs with her. When they hatch, they are not only alive, but are almost full miniature replicas of adults. Spiders hatch completely formed with their two body parts, the cephalothorax and the abdomen, and their eight legs already present.
some spiders have no eyes at all, or they can have up to eight. Finally, spiders do not have the two antennae found on all insects, but they do have two venom-bearing fangs. If the spider's head contains the danger, in its abdomen, there is magic. The same silk that spins webs also creates beautiful egg casings. Hundreds of eggs can be laid by one female. Among the first things a newborn spider does is create a drag line and use it to catch the wind and fly away to safety. This is called ballooning, and any spiderling not quick to master it may well become a meal for its nest mates. Of all the spiderlings that finally hatch and then see daylight, only one or two will make it past this stage. Well, they're really cute as babies. Yeah, a stage which lasts about 10 seconds. Oh, no, weeks, actually, often months. Spiders are remarkably long-lived. Yeah, that figures. You know, this spider, although it's supposed to be so fierce, it's not really that scary. I mean, it's so slow and calm. It's the other ones, the scurrying ones. Those I'm finding a little bit harder to love. Well, let me ask you this question. If you can't live without something, does that mean you love it? Almost. I'd say yes, kind of. Well, you may not realize it, but you and I probably can't live without spiders, love them or not. Yeah, maybe you and she can't, but I can, definitely. They're among the most important pest controls that we have. They help us by eating incredible amounts of insects that we consider undesirable. Oh, excuse me. I'd like to know what insect a spider eats that could possibly be more undesirable than it is. I mean, hey, look at that thing. It's a walking nightmare. Well, for one thing, they eat mosquitoes, tons of mosquitoes. I'm beginning to warm up to them. Maybe I'll take some of them my next summer vacation. Yeah, I'd rather have the mosquitoes. More people die from diseases carried and spread by mosquitoes than from any other cause, including wars, cancer, car accidents, and heart attacks. Okay, spiders eat mosquitoes. That's good. What else? Bees, flies, and occasionally scorpions. Take a look. A scorpion's venom may be deadly, but drop for drop, it is far less powerful than the black widows. Plus, the spider can trap an enemy with silk from her spinnerets, so she is capable of subduing prey many times her size. Not all spiders need silk or webs to capture their victims. The wolf spider simply lies in wait and snatches a meal into her lair. This jumping spider uses speed. With its four brilliant eyes, it can so precisely judge the exact distance to its prey that the insect never sees death coming. There is even a spider that can trap its prey by spitting. It hunts in total darkness and sneaks up so stealthily that even a fly can't feel that delicate leg touching it, sizing up the distance. Then it spits out a trap of sticky gum and it's bye-bye fly. This one specializes in piercing the armor of crustaceans, pill bugs, and sow bugs, and sucking out their juices. Spiders are also perfectly happy to eat each other when they're in the mood for a meal. There are even spiders who have adapted to hunting in water. This one, who can walk on water, has caught itself a crane fly. The one adult insect that can really give a good hunting spider trouble is the bombardier beetle. When attacked, it releases a boiling, acid-like spray that discourages even the most hungry wolf spider. But in the arachnid's vast arsenal, there are ways around even burning and boiling chemical weapons. This spider spins the bombardier up so fast that his spray has no chance to hit its mark. When the beetle has finally emptied itself of poison, the spider will eat it.
And now it's time to introduce the second big star of today's show, a cousin of the spider, the Emperor Scorpion. These scorpions are used in the movies all the time because they get big and scary looking, but they're not very dangerous. Hi there. <laughs> Just think we may be co-stars one day. The exoskeleton of the scorpion has the unusual ability to reflect ultraviolet light. Most scorpions are night hunters and, in the wild, are rarely seen by anything, unless it happens to be holding an ultraviolet lamp. In the dark, the scorpion may use super sensitive hairs on its body to pick up the presence of prey. This one grasps a tiger moth in its claws and then, arching its tail over its back, delivers a series of venomous stings. Though tiger moths are distasteful to most animals, the scorpion will have no problem digesting it. Her venom takes only 15 seconds to do its work. Like their fellow arachnids, scorpions are not sentimental about their own kind. When two of them meet, they are apt to try and eat one another. The African emperor scorpion can grow to be up to a foot long, the largest scorpion in the world. When a pair of these scorpions meet to mate, it's a mighty dance. This female has emitted a perfume called a pheromone. The male responds by grasping her claws and leading her through their elaborate mating dance. After a year of gestation, the female emperor gives birth to about 30 tiny, pale replicas of herself. For the first week or two, they will crawl up and live on the safest place around, mother's back. Now it's time for factualities. I'm in my spider suit. That means I'm gonna spin some yarn, get it, about my factualities. Listen to these. Did you know that some spider webs, if unwound, would be 300 miles long? That's like the distance between Pittsburgh and Detroit. Now, if you don't think that's long, try walking it. <laughs> hey, did you also know that scorpions can go as long as four or five months without food? And some spiders, they can live a year without eating. Now, there's a ballooning spiderling that has been spotted at elevations of 14,000 feet in the air. Wow, they gotta watch out for 747s, let me tell you. And the jumping spider, that spider can jump 40 times its own body length. Wow, and that, folks, is my factualities for the day on spiders. Glad you spent some time with us in Bug City. See you next time. Goodbye. But wait a minute. Look, I'm a arachnid. Here, look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. See eight you again legs. soon. Hey, eight's my lucky number. Boy, what a lot of ankles. Hey. Good night, folks. Bye, uh, gang. Uh, so long, everybody.